It's been a little while since we've done a time lapse on the channel, so let's take care of that. The star of today's video is going to be the Olight i5R, and what we're going to be doing is feeding it a 3.7 volt 14500 battery um, instead of its included 2.4 volt proprietary battery. And we've done this in the past to see if this light would get too hot to handle with a 3.7 volt battery, or if it would provide a boost in output over the included battery. And um, if you missed that video, I'll link it at the end of this one, but I'll also spoil it here for you. Um, so yeah, I guess skip a 15 seconds ahead if you don't want to find out. But basically we found out that there is no heat issue uh, but there's also no boost in performance, really, no noticeable boost in performance. So the conclusion has been there's no point in dropping a 3.7 volt 14500 in the i5R. Its included battery does just about the same thing, um, and there's really no reason to jump to another type of battery, especially because this one's USB-C rechargeable. But uh, someone asked a good question, and that's what about run times? Would, a, would this type of battery provide extra runtime over the included battery's runtime? So the time to beat is 170 minutes um, on high here. And that is two hours and 50 minutes, by the way. So if this battery can power this light for over that amount of time, then it may actually be worth it. I predict that it won't, but there's only one way to find out for sure. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. Another thing uh, worth mentioning is that when you do put a 3.7 volt 14500 in the i5R or the i5T for that matter, you lose the light's two mode operation. You only get the upper high mode operation. So that's why we're going to be testing that runtime against the factory runtime this video. So yeah, that's what we'll be up to. And also if you missed the other video where we kind of compare the output between the included 2.4 volt battery and the 3.7 volt battery, I'm gonna just briefly show some footage outside of that now so that you can see there's not too much of a noticeable difference. So let's cut to that. Out in the backyard to check out the beam shot difference between the included battery, which is in the light right now. This is on its low setting and let's kick it into high here. So yeah, you do get the two mode operation on the i5R with the included battery. That's what we're looking at as far as high mode goes. Very nice. And here's the output with the 3.7 volt battery. And as you can see, we lose the low mode operation. It becomes a one mode light. There's the output. Still pretty nice, maybe slightly boosted, but in my opinion, not by much. So as you can see, not too much of a reason to prefer a 3.7 volt battery over the included battery when it comes to performance output wise. That only leaves the question of runtime remaining. Will this battery offer any advantage when it comes to runtime? That's what we're gonna find out here in a moment with a time lapse. Uh, according to this milliamp hour claim, it sure would. This thing is claiming to have more capacity than this 18650 right here. This 18650 has got 2200 milliamp hour capacity. And this thing's like, yeah, no worries. I got a extra 300 on top of that, 2500 milliamp hour. So, when this battery appeared in a previous video, a lot of you uh, savvy people out there pointed out how ridiculous that claim is. Um, what I'm really interested in when it comes to this battery, though, is this claim to have a protestion circuit. Uh, uh, this claims to be protected, so uh, that typo is kind of funny, but yeah, I do want to take the voltage of this battery after the test to see if it is indeed a protected cell. So without further ado, let's cue the runtime. All right, test complete. And as you can see, the official stop time is two hours and 23 minutes, which does fall short of the 170 minute 
um, mark set by the included battery, so definitely fell short. And this stop time is extremely generous, by the way, because at the end of the test, the LED was just barely glowing. There was really no usable light at all. The usable light had stopped well before that. I just recorded this time because uh, I actually haven't ran the included battery down all the way, so I don't know if this output remains usable until the very end or if it tapers off into nothing similar to what we just saw with the 3.7 volt battery. Um, whenever I do a runtime test like this, um, I usually get surprised by something, and in this case, three things surprise me. Um, first of all was the heat coming from the OLED i5R. In previous videos and tests I've done this, um, this pretty much remains at room temperature, the outer body of the light. And this time around, it did get warm. I wouldn't call it hot, but it did get warm. And I recorded the temperature of it, and it was about, uh, it was in the low 90s. It was about 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, not um, unsafe in my opinion, but warmer than what I was used to seeing. So that was kind of a surprise. Second surprise was just how long the battery actually lasted. I was actually expecting it to kind of die out well before the increased voltage I was expecting to um, expel the, the energy faster than it did. And then the third thing, and this one was really weird, the output started to flicker at about the 57 minute mark. For about five to 10 minutes, it was just strobing. And so I thought to myself, wow, I'm gonna get to go to bed on time um, and stuff. But then it went back to normal output after that until this uh, mark here when it ran completely down. So that was a bit odd, but uh, in any case, I think that this is the nail in the coffin. There's no reason to use this battery in the OLED i5R, a 14500 with 3.7 volt. Um, now granted, this is a really weird kind of battery. I just kind of went the cheap route when it came to the battery here. So there might be better 14500s out there, but in any case, I, do, I still think you're better off just saving your money and your time and, and using the included battery with the OLED i5R. Final thing I want to do here is just check the voltage of this battery to see if it is indeed protected. So yeah, the screen there on the right will tell us um, if this is protected, we should expect to see a voltage of about 2.9 or 2.8 at least. Um, otherwise, if it's lower than that, the cell could be permanently damaged. 2.89. Okay, pretty happy with that. 2.89. So at least these things are protected. And um, in future videos, I am going to try this type of battery in different lights. I've got a Lumitop uh, Tool AA um, on order, so I'm going to try that um, light with this battery combo, see how that does. So yeah, if you're interested in that, stay tuned for that video. But I really appreciate you sticking around for this one. Hope you have a great day and take care.